Hi guys, Yasas Ke Carlos Irtata to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making another delicious dessert. This one is in Greek is known as floyeres. They're basically almond filled little phyllo flutes. So it's an almond filling. I make mine with a frangipan filling, the same filling that you would get in an almond fil filled croissant, the same filling that's in that decadent cherry almond frangipan tart that I made last year, which is so good if you haven't had it. Check it out, I'll link it down in the description box below. But it's filled with that frangipan filling, which is so decadent, creamy, and delicious, and then wrapped in buttery phyllo. Then if that's not good enough, once they come out of the oven, they're drenched in an aromatic syrup. They're individual little bites, so it's perfect for a party because your guests can just pick it up and enjoy it. Make some coffee because this is gonna be a good one. Let's get started. So every syrupy dessert begins with making the syrup. So I'm making only a, I'm only gonna bake half of the batch. The other batch I'm going to freeze. So I'm just making a half batch of syrup, even though you could make the full batch because if it's summertime where you are like it is where I am, you could use this syrup to flavor smoothies and drinks or whatever you want. But for today, we're doing the half batch. So in a small saucepan, I have a cup of granulated sugar. To that, I'm adding a cup of water and I'm just going to bring it to a boil once the syrup dissolves, take it off of the heat, stir in a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. You could also do a little squeeze of lemon juice in there, set it aside, and it's going to be ready once it cools down. Now we're gonna make the filling. So in a bowl here, I have a stick of unsalted butter that's at room temperature. You wanna make sure it's at room temperature so that way you don't have to take out a mix or anything like that. Half a cup of granulated sugar. You want it to be even softer than room temperature, so you can pop it in the microwave for like seven or eight seconds if you need to get it even softer. To that, I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt, a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract, two teaspoons of pure almond extract. Make sure you're using the pure stuff because um, imitation almond extract does not taste anything like pure almond extract. It tastes very perfumey and weird. Just mix everything all up. It smells so good already. Now I have two eggs here that I've just brought to room temperature by putting them in a glass of warm water. And I'm gonna add them to the bowl. Now if you want to, I used to do this, I still do when I'm not in a hurry. I break the eggs in a separate bowl just in case you ever get a bad egg. I've, we ran a bakery for 10 years and I think I've gotten a bad egg once. <laughs> It can happen though, and when it does, you're gonna have to throw away everything that the egg went in, so why risk it? So you can switch to a whisk and just whisk everything all together. If everything is at room temperature, this step happens very easily. Then I have two cups of almond flour. This is about 215 grams. Just mix it in, but before I do, I'm also gonna add about half of the zest of a lemon. Lemon and almond go so nice together. Almond tends to be very rich and heavy and the lemon zest really brightens it up. Did I say half? I'm probably gonna add all of this. <laughs> I love lemon zest. And you can just switch to a spatula and just combine everything all together until a paste is formed. And that's it, the filling is ready. So next I melted two sticks or half a pound of unsalted butter over the stove top and it is ready to go with a little pastry brush. I have a pound of phyllo, this is the number four which is the regular phyllo that's used to make most uh, desserts like baklava. You wanna make sure that it's thawed out and at room temperature. When you're thawing it out, leave it in the plastic wrap, leave it on the counter for about an hour or so so it can get to room temperature. And then we're just gonna cut this into two pieces. This looks like two equal pieces. Let's see. Close enough. We're gonna open one pack up at a time. Just like so. So I'm gonna take the melted butter and I'm just gonna drizzle it on top of the top layer of phyllo. Then I'm gonna take a little scoop of the almond filling, put it on the bottom. Now, if you want to make this even more delicious, if you have pitted cherries, you could put a cherry in the center. Cherry and almond are a match made in heaven. 
or if you want to add a little crunch to it, you can do some sliced almonds in the center, but you're going to fold the sides down. And if the phyllo is separated like this one is, don't worry about it. It's going to all come together. Roll up to make the little flutes. Just like that. And then put them on a baking tray that's lined with parchment paper. Let's do a few more. Always need some butter. And you do not have to brush each layer. A little scoop or a tablespoon of the filling is all you need because this stuff is rich and it is going to spread when it bakes. Fold the sides. The sides should generally be going a little bit over the filling, but it's okay. And then go ahead and roll up. And we're going to keep doing this until all of the filling and all of the phyllo sheets are done. Now, if you get to the end and you're running low on filling and you have lots of extra phyllo left over, you could start doubling up the layers. That's fine too, so you don't waste any. Because many times when you have leftover phyllo and you do put it in the refrigerator, if it's just five, six sheets and you're not making a pastry with shredded phyllo in it, it just gets wasted, so why waste? So I'm gonna continue forming these and then we're gonna move on to the next step. So this recipe makes about 30 little flutes. You can make this into a pie if you don't wanna make the individual little uh, pastries. What, what you would do is in a pie pan, about a nine inch round pie pan, you would layer eight sheets of phyllo pastry buttered in between, obviously. Then go ahead and put all of the filling in the center. You can put on top of that filling, you could put some pitted cherries or some chocolate chips, or leave it plain, or some sliced almonds, it's up to you. And then layer the top with about eight more sheets, crinkle the edges, brush with butter, and then bake it in the oven for about 45 minutes or until it's done. Um, if you want me to do a little tutorial on that, let me know in the comment section down below, but that's basically how you do it. You can freeze as many as you want and bake off as many as you want. How you would do that is you would put them in the freezer until the butter that's brushed on top um, sets and hardens because if you cover this with plastic wrap, the butter is going to get stuck to it. Which brings me to another point. Once you're done forming them, brush them generously with the remaining butter and then you're going to bake the tray in a 350 degree preheated oven for about 20 or 25 minutes until they get nice and golden on top. But like I said, you can freeze all the unbaked ones. They stay fresh for about two months. Once the butter ch uh, chills in the freezer, then wrap the trays in plastic wrap, and then you can bake them off as you need them. Once they come out of the oven, you're gonna wanna drench them with that syrup, let them sit for about 30, 40 minutes until the syrup is absorbed, and then they're gonna be ready to be served, and I'll show you what they look like as soon as they're done. The floyettes came out of the oven, they were doused and drenched in the syrup, they sat for a little while, which is the hardest part, and then I made myself a cup of coffee, which I'm gonna enjoy in a little bit. The house smells amazing, you guys, so you're gonna to wanna to make these. Anytime phyllo is baking in the oven, it just smells like, um, like dessert heaven. <laughs> it smells like a bakery. So you just serve them as is. Now, if you don't want to, uh, if you want them less sweet, then don't pour the syrup on top, and you could just dust some powdered sugar. That's an option for you. It's really up to you. I like it with the syrup. I'll just have one, and it hits the, su the sweet spot, perfectly sweet. Speaking of which, it's time to do the taste test. Mmm, I love that almond filling in anything. It's creamy and sweet and just tastes like almond cream. The, the phyllo is buttery and slightly crisp on top and then the bottom is my favorite part that gets drenched in the syrup and gets nice and soft. It's so delicious, perfect with a nice cup of coffee which, is, which I'm gonna enjoy right now. You guys head on over to the website, DemetrisDishes.com to get the exact measurements. Make it, let me know what you think in the comments section down below and I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.